Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to do a video a little bit different than my usual because it's a flip through of my first and second bullet journals. Um, I'm going to show you how I started bullet journaling, how I used to do the spreads, and you're going to see my improvement over the years on my calligraphy, creativity, and my way of thinking of the spreads. So this is my first bullet journal. Um, this bullet journal is the Moleskine with a soft cover A5 dotted notebook and this notebook lasted me from May all the way to December of 2017. Um, I bought the Moleskine because it was the cheaper one here in Portugal for a bullet journal and because it was my first I wasn't sure if I was going to keep doing bullet journal, if I was going to give up. So I bought a um, really cheap one and it lasted me for 2017. A quick disclaimer before I start showing you my bullet journals is that um, some of the pages are in Portuguese because when I started this bullet journal I wasn't thinking about creating an Instagram account about bullet journal and a YouTube channel so everything is in Portuguese and some of the things are very personal so they are going to be blurred but I'm going to show you all the spreads and you're going to be able to understand what they mean and what they are used for. So here I just did a little cover of the year. I just wrote 2017, pretty basic, just to um, start the bullet journal. So this is my first spread in my bullet journal, which is the account spread. It's a spread that I used for writing my websites and emails and passwords on social media because um, sometimes we have like a bunch of emails and a bunch of usernames and it's hard to remember all of them so I just used it for that purpose. I don't use this spread anymore, I don't feel safe having all my accounts and passwords in my bullet journal that I can lost so I don't use this anymore but it was useful at the time. Next, we have my movies, TV shows, and books to read. Um, I don't have these um, spreads in my bullet journal anymore. I have a list on Trello with this. It's way more easier to track. And if you're noticing, the only color that I'm using in my spreads is black because when I started bullet journal, I just thought about doing everything in black and adding some grays. But everything is with black and this was actually the um, marker tip on the Tombow Dual Brush Pen that I used to do this. And I was keeping the things pretty simple because it was just the beginning. Next I have the product spread. It's the spread where you add your products and where, you, where you, did you buy them and how much it cost. So if you're going to a specific place, you know that that product, if you need it, it's from there. So you can buy it instead of wasting more money in another place because you don't remember when you bought it. It's, it's just a reference for when I go shopping, basically. I also don't do this spread anymore because it's not useful for me anymore. Then I just have a shopping cart for the year. I was new to spread, so I was just doing the ones that fit my bullet journal and I did a shopping cart for the whole year. Then I have my 2017 goals, nothing really specific, just things in general. And next to it I have my year at a glance, or at least the rest of the year. And as you can see I was just using a black pen, I think this was the Muji gel pen in the size 0 0.5. And I was using a Tombow Dual Brush Pens in grey to do the highlights of the weeks of the important events on the months. Then a future log. I did my future log horizontally, but I realized that vertical spreads are much better, so it was just to try. Then we have my 2018 goals, things to do in 2018, and I have my first cover page of the months, which is the cover page for May. I started bullet journaling in May, because I just found out about Bullet Journal in February, I think. So I ordered the Molly Skin and I started planning the spreads um, in April. So I have a little bit of time to do just these mountains 
um, for the cover page. Again, everything in Portuguese and really simple with zero colors. Then I just did a habit tracker and an expense tracker. No monthly calendar, no anything because I thought that I wasn't going to need that. So I just did a huge habit tracker on, from the side and an expense tracker that I still do nowadays. But this habit tracker was huge because I was trying to track a bunch of things. Now I don't track anymore. They are not useful for me anymore. But it was really good to try the layouts and how I like the spreads. Next we have my first week. And I think I saw this layout on one of the first videos of Amanda Rachel Lee and I. And I was doing just the days of the week with the weekend um, together. Just plain black with a calendar on the top. Then we start with June and I actually wasn't going to write June in Portuguese but I um, made the mistake of writing in English but this was the first time trying calligraphy with a tumble wall brush pens and as you can see I was really a beginner so it's really bad but for starters it's good I started doing calligraphy around this time because I really wanted to spice up the things in my bullet journal so this was my first try And we start with July, and July was the month that I decided to add some pictures of from Tumblr, just to add like a little color to the pages. I was starting to watch a bunch of YouTube videos with a bunch of colors and collages, and I decided to try them out. And I think July was the month where I bought the Pigma Micron pens, and I started doing fake calligraphy with them, and. As you can see, my calligraphy was kind of like geometrical, um, very like hard and not smooth at all. But it, this was just the beginning, as I said before. Then I started doing boxes on the weeklies just to try. Then for the weeks that I was not going to be home, I was just doing the week in one page and the other I was using to do to-do lists. Then I just did a, a quotes page. And we start with August. My calligraphy, it's kind of getting better. And I think that it was around August that I started my account on Amino. If you don't have Amino, I will have it right here. I started showing my bullet journal pages on Amino. And then I started posting the pictures on Instagram later on, but I started on Amino. Then we start with September. My calligraphy is a little bit different. I was using the um, Pigma Micron pens to do this. And as you can see here in August, the calligraphy, it's getting better. Here was the month where I decided to add a, a calendar and some sections for goals this month to buy and some notes right here and I started adding this ombre effect to the number I was starting to add different things to my bullet journal around this time then we start with October I started in October a mood tracker and I kind of gave up on that because the colors were really like streaky and I wasn't liking the colors. So I kind of gave up in the middle of the month. Here I made a big mistake of doing 8 days um, in 2 pages instead of just a week. I was doing 8 days. This was starting to get really confused throughout the end because normally we start like on Monday or Sunday but... Then on the next page we start on Tuesday and then we start on Wednesday. It was really confused, so big mistake. But I really like the vertical layout. So that was the good thing about this spread. Then we start with November, where I started to add some colors and doing different titles. I had a big calendar with some with a key to know what which day was going to look like 
and I added a mini mood tracker around here because I was really down to try the mood tracker again, but the graph style did not work. Then here I started adding the um, timetable, like a time tracker. Um, I took this idea from Boho Berry, but actually for me it doesn't work at all, so I don't do it anymore either. Then we finished the notebook with December, where I did this smaller calendar, the sections this month, and an expense tracker. And this month I don't know why, but I didn't have an habit tracker. And I started doing weeklies, three days per page, and horizontal again. And around the middle of the month, I just give up on bullet journal. And this is all from my 2017 bullet journal. So now we change to a Leuchtturm 1917. And the reason why I prefer the Leuchtturm over a Scribbles That Matters or a Moleskine is because the bullet journal itself is bigger. It has more pages and it has been the best notebook I've ever used to bullet journal, including the Scribbles That Matter notebook. So from now on, I'm just going to buy the Lauchstrom. It's really good. One year fits here perfectly. So I'm really down to try next year a Lauchstrom again. So this notebook lasted me for a year and I was really proud of all the spreads because here you can see that I was coming from a really dark place <laughs> in the other bullet journal with a lot of blacks and grays. And I started here with color and yeah, 2018 was the year where I exploded um, on Instagram and YouTube with my bullet journal, so it's a really big thing for me, 2018. So let's show my process. So the first page is an index. I'm trying to use an index on my 2019 bullet journal, but 2018 it didn't work at all. I just forgot to fill the index in, so it's blank. And then we have my Calendex, and you're probably wondering why this Calendex says from 2018 to 2019. Because I thought that this notebook, because it's so thick and has so many pages, that I thought in the beginning of this bullet journal that this notebook was going to last me for two years. I was extremely wrong, um, I don't know what was my idea, but all the spreads here are from 2018 and 2019 because I planned using this notebook for two years, so moving on. We have my future log horizontally with a lot of blues because I thought that, okay, in the other bullet journal you used black because your bullet journal was black, so maybe now your bullet journal is blue. So do all the spreads in blue, just different like headers and themes and spreads, but all blue. So I was going to go with that idea, so I did everything blue for the um, introduction pages. Then I have my goals page and my wish list for the two years. Then I had my movies, TV shows, um, games and books to check out. I don't use these pages anymore. I prefer to having them digitally instead of on my bullet journal. Then again with the products page. And we start with January. My calligraphy was getting better as you can see. And I was adding a lot of more colors to the cover page, but everything was like kind of the same vibe. So here we have the first pages of January. I was starting to add different things on my bullet journal, so I added a quote to see if I would like it or not. Then we have my first week. So this layout is really messy. I don't like this layout because you have the weekdays, you have an Abbey Tracker and an Xmas Tracker for the week. It's too cluttered, I don't like spreads like this, so I tried this month, I think in February I tried to, but it wasn't. It, it's going to be a thing that I'm never going to repeat, because it's too messy for me.
So this page is a new one and it's a review of the month where you kind of make like a review of all the things you did on, on throughout the month and how you can improve the things and to see basically the things that you did most and that you need to do more. It's basically for that. And we start with February. Then we start with March. And as you can see, all the pages are all basically the same layout in the same colors because that was the um, thing that I was going for for 2018. Then we start with April where I was getting tired of the um, blue and I decided to do some pinks and purples. And this time was the time that I started adding some art to my bullet journal, as you can say, because I was starting doing this watercolor techniques on the days, and I really liked it. I used the same um, techniques for my November plan with me that I posted um, on my channel. And this was the time that I was starting to get tired of all the things looking the same, and I started to change things up. Then we start with May. May was the first month that I decided to start posting on Instagram and it was the month that I created my Instagram account uh, about bullet journal and I was really happy with the feedback that I was receiving because putting your bullet journal out there it's really like uncomfortable in some ways and posting on Amino it's one thing, posting on Instagram I think it's other thing but I was having the support from Amino, so it was it was good to change a little bit. Then here I decided to use like a different font to the um, to the text, and I was using this focus page, which is basically like goals for physical, mentally, spiritual, spiritual, and finances, but in a different way. It's the thing that you want to focus on for the month. Really helpful. I did the same layout for the weeks. And this was my first time trying the page one line a day. This uh, um, page was two lines a day, but you get the idea. And it, this was really helpful because I was going through tough times in May. And being able to have a place to journal and to put your thoughts on it's really helpful in a lot of ways and it was really good for me to create this spread, especially in this month. It was really helpful. It's a thing that I want to incorporate more in 2019, even though I don't know if I'm going to. But this was a page that I want to repeat in the future. Then we start with June. And June was the month where I did my first theme, which was the LGBTQ plus theme. Um, it's just basically rainbows and, and like the seven colors of the rainbow throughout the month, but it was with that idea in mind, so it's kind of that theme, if you want. And because this month I started my internship, I was just doing a week per page, really helpful, and I was just doing the um, letters, each one with a color of the rainbow. And this was actually my mm, birthday month. So it was kind of good to have this happiness on um, a monthly spread. This was when I decided to buy more Tombos. I bought the pink and the blue. And because it was my birthday month, my boyfriend gave me the Tombow Food and Nosuke pens. And it's when I started to do calligraphy, like the real calligraphy. And I was really inspired to try calligraphy and to try new things, so that's what I did. In July I was still doing an internship, so I was just doing the weeks at the same format, but I was trying different calligraphy styles and different number styles to see what I liked. Here I did calligraphy with Plascolor, which is pens that I bought from the dollar store. It's kind of the Crayola Super Tips but the cheaper version, and I was really good at calligraphy at the time. I was really improving, 
And here with the Tambo Fudenowski, I decided that I really liked calligraphy and that I wanted to try more. So I kept doing calligraphy and since this day I never stopped. Then I was just keeping track of the packages that I was buying online, just to see how much it cost if they if arrived and all that stuff. Then we start with August and August was the first month for me doing um, everything in English because I was getting so much inspiration from Instagram and I was receiving so much followers from like the United States and people that actually speak English so I started doing my pages all in English because I thought that it was going to be really good for me to, tr to practice my English and to start getting in the community of English bullet journal So I started doing drop shadows on the letters, I added another quote, and this was actually the lavenders that I might have actually did for May, I think, and but I painted them pink to um, match the month. And here I started doing a big habit tracker, and this was inspired by Planning with Kay. If you follow her, she does this kind of, this type of habit trackers. Or at least she used to do. I don't know if she keeps doing it, but I took inspiration from her and I was just doing the um, one week in one page because I was on vacation and so I don't need to have a two pages per week. And I was actually using the other page to do a weekly review just to keep track of things that happened throughout the week and how I felt and what happened and this was very useful too. So I think that this started on August, but from this month to now, I still kind of forget that I have a, a bullet journal to fill in and I kind of don't do the last week of the month. I don't know why, but I just leave it blank because I forget to fill them in. This was my page to start um, thinking about the themes for September because I was really inspired. I think September was the best month of 2018 because I was really inspired to start creating different spreads and actually a theme and to give and to spend more time on bullet journal and creating spreads. So I was really down to start um, a theme for September and I was really happy with the result, which was leaves and greens and a lot of this like tropical style. And I really enjoy it. So as you can see here, I just did calligraphy, getting better at calligraphy as you can see. I was using washi tape, I was doing like watercolor techniques and all that stuff and this was really, really, really inspirational for me f to start um, creating more on bullet journal because people on Amino and Instagram were really liking my work and as you can see here I had the goal of hitting 50 followers on Instagram and then I hit 70 followers on Instagram. So. As you can see, I wasn't big on Instagram and I'm still not big on Instagram, but here I was just having like 70 followers on Instagram and I was really down to start gaining more and to um, explore this creative creative side of me. And we did these pages. I was really happy with this uh, with how this turned out because this took me a long time to do and I was really down to start creating more stuff like this. And we have the weeks. And as you can see here, I just kind of didn't care about the week. So I was just doing like this. I wasn't really focused on creating a week for the last week of September. And then we start with October. So this was my first monthly plan with me in my YouTube channel. And I was really, really happy with how the whole month turned out, even though the video is not perfect, but I'm going to link it here in the card and in my description. But I was really happy to actually step in YouTube and start YouTube instead of just like doing the pages and only receiving attention on Instagram. I was really pumped to start a YouTube channel. And so I did, even though my 
calligraphy and drawing skills and equipment to film wasn't perfect, I did it anyways, which is really important. This was also my first time trying a uh, mood tracker by painting the leaves with different moods. And a lot of people actually like this mood tracker and I was really happy with the results. So thank you so much for the support on this month. It was a really push for me to start creating more and to be more active on social media. And here was just a little mistake that I was just like, hmm. So here I found out my love for vertical wigs, actually. And I was really, really happy with the result, like the colors and how the whole theme was really good. I was really happy. So now we start with November. And actually for November I tried a gratitude log that didn't work. Um, I thought that it was going to be like maybe the same thing as one line a day. But I tried the November gratitude log from Boho Berry and I actually did not use it because I thought that was going to be different. So for me a gratitude log doesn't work but a one line a day works. Then around here, I stopped caring about the weeks, so I just I was just doing like a little phrase right here. And for the last week, I was just I'm just using this to track my days. It doesn't need to be um, super pretty, so I just don't care. Then I just left these pages off because of this, and. I started my December plan with me, which was one of my favorites of my bullet journal because it's obviously Stranger Things and I'm a huge fan of Stranger Things and I'm so sad that I have to wait until July for the third season, but that's okay. And I did Stranger Things because I really like the series and it's a thing for every age, so you should check it out if you've never seen it. Here I was just drawing like the titles and doing the collages of the characters because I obviously wasn't going to draw Eleven and the boys so I was just like slapping here some collages and I think that it turned out really cute I tried to get the same vibe as the series like very messy I really like this style for this month then I really liked my happy tracker and mood tracker with the egos and the Christmas lights and it was really good to to do this theme. I, I really enjoy it. Then this is my first week where I decided to do some days and some references. And I did it for two weeks because then I was just like, I don't have any references. I'm not going to watch the, the show again. So I was just like, forgot about the references. And again, Last week, I just kind of didn't care about the layout. So that's all from my bullet journals. And a quick thing that I want to tell you is that, as you can see, you don't need to have a fancy bullet journal to start bullet journaling. You don't need fancy pens to start creating. You just take one step at a time. So in my case, first I started with black and really simple in Portuguese, nothing like themes and aesthetic pleasing and I tried a bunch of layouts, then I decided to add some colors to be more careful about my spreads and then I started adding some themes and some colors and now I'm right here so I just want to say that if you really want to start bullet journal or you want to start an account on Instagram or a channel on YouTube you don't need to be perfect and you don't need to have an aesthetic pleasing notebook you just need to start. I think that the most important step here is to start and to just have faith in yourself and if you really want to create bullet journal just you can do it okay everyone can do it and if you are not sure if you should post a thing or not because you're afraid of people of what people are going to say or you don't have the right equipment or your calligraphy is not great post it anyways you know there's going to be always at least one person that is going to say that that's beautiful that you should continue creating 
you know, that's how all of your favorite YouTubers started. So take that as um, inspiration for you to start creating bullet journal. I think that's really important. So that's it for my video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one.